Good evening and uh, welcome to another Wednesday's Word as we bring you a word of encouragement on Wednesday evening. Uh, we, as you do, look forward to the time we'll be able to meet together in person and fellowship. Uh, we're long anticipating that day, uh, but until then, we praise the Lord we have this medium to come to you and uh, bring you the word. We pray that it'll be an encouragement to you today. Um, the first Wednesday's word was out of Psalms 91. Uh, then last Wednesday, Gary did such a great job on Psalms 18. And I was led uh, tonight to be able to bring you Psalms 34. So if you have your Bibles, uh, turn to Psalms 34. and We'll be looking at about uh, eight verses out of that uh, psalm, I believe, will be an encouragement to you. Uh, give you a little background on, the, on that psalm. Uh, it's basically where King David is writing. He's still uh, running from King Saul, running for his life. Uh, as you know, King Saul wants him dead. Uh, he finds himself with the Philistines, obviously the enemies of God, and uh, there he is living with them and obviously at times fearful for his life from them. Remember, he killed their champion, Goliath. And so uh, fear is, is, is a stronghold, I believe, there uh, in that chapter because David uses this term about all my fears. Uh, we'll look at the context of what he says that, but when he talks about all his fears, obviously he had fears and he had plenty to fear about uh, with King Saul looking to take his life and then they're living with the enemies of God. And uh, so fear uh, is something that we all deal with where we look at it as fear or worry or anxiety. I mean, those all kind of go together, but uh, there's times in our life where fear does uh, begin to dominate us. And if we look at it symbolically, it's, it's kind of like... Uh, I guess David at some time in his life there would, would have been classified as living in fear town since he said, all my fears. But that's not where David wanted to, to live. And we can see in this Psalms that he was looking to live, I would think, in a place that he would have called Peaceville. Uh, but for all of us, we've got to go from fear town, if that's what's dominating our life or at times wanting to control our life, to a place called Peaceville. But like we move anywhere or take a trip anywhere we've got to pack appropriately you don't pack when you take a trip to the beach or a, a resort at the beach you don't pack the same way if you take a trip for a resort a ski resort to Colorado you're gonna you're gonna pack differently uh, depending on your destination and so if your destination is peaceful then you need to pack for that I guess we could call this destination uh, packing for peaceful uh, you need to pack your suitcase for the things that you need to have to live in that place. And so I just happen to have my little suitcase here. And so we're going to pack it with four things I believe are important that we can find in this passage to be able to get out of fear town and be able to live in Peaceville. And so let's look at that. The first one is be sure to pack your praise. Uh, that's we're going to put that in our suitcase because that's what we have to have. You, you may think, well, that's an unusual thing to have first in the suitcase uh, with all that I'm dealing with, with fear and anxiety or whatever. Uh, I may not see all that to praise the Lord about, but listen to how David starts the psalm. Psalms 34, 1. I bless the Lord at all times. Not sometimes, not just good times, which is easier to do, but even in the bad times, he blesses the Lord, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I mean, that's a continuation, good or bad. He wanted to continually praise the Lord. Verse 2, my soul will make its boast in the Lord. Not bragging about me, but we're bragging about the Lord. The humble will hear it and rejoice. They're going to praise too based on what they hear us say. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. To magnify the Lord. Obviously, the Lord's already magnified. Uh, he is who he is. He's uh, No matter what we do, he is magnified. But we can magnify his name to others wh where they'll see how great a God he is. And it says to do that with me. And then he says, exalt his name together. In other words, he's saying, don't leave me here just to praise the Lord by myself. Do it with me. Listen to what I say and praise the Lord. We praise the Lord for who he is. We also praise the Lord for what he does. 
even in the midst of our situation. We look at how faithful God's been up to this point, and he'll continue to be faithful uh, based on his track record. He's always been a faithful God to his people. And so we, we look at that and we praise the Lord. We look at all the things that are in our life to be praiseworthy. Maybe there's some things that you're praying for that aren't answered or aren't coming to pass or even this situation, but we look at all the things that God is faithful in the midst of the negative and in, even in the past how he's been faithful and all the things that we have in our life today that we can praise the Lord for. It all depends on our focus. It's kind of like the little kid, he was 11 years old looking for his lost contact lens. He looked all over the living room. Two hours he spent looking for that contact lens he couldn't find it so he went almost in tears to his mom confessed he had lost his contact lens his mom got on his her hands and knees and in five minutes found the contact lens the little boy said mom how did you do it I, I looked two hours couldn't find it you found it in five minutes the mom says you were looking for a contact lens I was looking for 175 dollars so it depends on what our focus is uh, her focus was hey I'm gonna be out a lot of money so she looked harder and so here our focus needs to be praise. The second thing we got to pack up for to be able to go to Peaceville is to pack up your pursuit. We'll put that in our suitcase because in Psalms uh, 34, 4, it says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. I sought the Lord. He was in pursuit of what? Not what, who? He was in pursuit of the Lord. And then he went on to say, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescue them. Did you, did you catch that? The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. See, if we fear the Lord, we don't need to fear anything else. Uh, we respect him. We honor him. And so when we do that, there's little room for fear because we fear him. And it says that he encamps upon those that fear him. It's kind of like a a military term that he encamps around there. You know, you can think about the, the little boy that's always bullied by somebody, you know, and if he's bullied in his neighborhood by a particular bully, can you imagine if that little boy had behind him uh, a team of Navy SEALs that were armed with uh, machine guns uh, and a drone up above him that was pointed at the, uh, at the enemy? Uh, can you believe that with tanks around him? You think with all of that behind the little young boy and a banner that said, you know, that we're for him, do you think that bully would run away? Of course, because the whole force of the military is behind that little boy. Well, the Lord, he encamps around those who fear him. With all that that's at our disposal with the Lord with us, we don't have to fear because the Lord is there and he's protecting us in every way imaginable. And then that in verse 8, it says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. See, that's still pursuing. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, if you go to a restaurant, you know, there, there comes a time when, you know, you have to stop and say, Look, my friends told me this food was good. Uh, the menu sounds like it's good after I read it. Uh, the reviews sounded good. Um, the... The people around my table says this is good, but there comes a time where hearing all that is not enough. You've got to taste. I've got to taste and put this menu to proof in my life to make it real for me. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Man, you have to get that fork, and then you agree, hey, this food is good. It's an experience that you have to have. You have to step out in faith and taste and see and make it part of your life that the Lord is good and then that verse goes on to say, how blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. You see, we're blessed when we experience the Lord and we pursue the Lord, we're tasting the Lord. It's all about him. And we see all those benefits that come from that kind of experience. And it's not just for what he gives us for pursuing it, but just his presence. You know, one time what I noticed this is a year ago back in the roller skate uh, arena, I think when we were meeting there and uh, the, the slide had a misspelling. It should have said presence, and it says presence like a gift that we're, we're wanting to have his presence. You know, we need to want to worship his presence, him being with us, more than the gifts that he gives us. And so that is how we pursue the Lord. Yes, he gives us the gifts. Yes, he gives us the blessings, 
but it's him that we pursue. Now, the third thing we need to put in our suitcase is and pack up is pack your pride remover. Pack your pride remover. We're going to put that in our suitcase. Of course, you think pride remover, that sounds like an aerosol spray. Well, if it was only so simple to get rid of pride that way, but it's not. Listen to what um, David says in verse 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. He's near to the brokenhearted. That's the brokenhearted is those that aren't prideful, those that are dependent on the Lord, uh, those who's, who, who depend on his grace and his mercy and his protection, his provision, his strength. Uh, there's no room for pride uh, when you're brokenhearted. You know, that's, that's the time when we really realize that we're so dependent on God in everything in all of our ways, and, and the, what, what does it say about that? The Lord is near to those people who are brokenhearted. I, I want the Lord near me. You know, the Bible says he's opposed to the prideful. Oh, but he gives grace to the humble. And here we see that that's part of what we have to pack for uh, getting to that area of peace feel is we have to get our pride remover. We have to pack that and say that can't be part of our life. And pride just takes its way in our life in so many different ways, but we've got to get rid of it. We, we can find out how much we really uh, are dependent on the Lord by how much we obey him. And we have to just humble ourselves, uh, and, and we get the blessings of the Lord as him being near us. And when he's near us, we sure don't need to be afraid. And then the last thing that we've got to pack up in our suitcase is be sure to pack your patience. We're going to put that in our suitcase and and realize that now we've got to say, hey, when things happen, part of fear is, or overcoming fear is, we have to make sure that our passion, our patience is packed. Listen to verse 17. The righteous cry, those the righteous, those that are right with God, they're crying, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Listen to verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of all of them. Uh, you see that the righteous, we go through afflictions too. It even says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many of the TV preachers would uh, don't preach about that. You see, the afflictions of the righteous, they're many. But the, the guarantee is, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. All of them he delivers them from. And so that's our promise, but we have to wait patiently because here they're crying out. Here there's a lot of afflictions, but the answer comes. He says he delivers them, but sometimes it doesn't come right away. Those cries sometimes go for a while, but we've got to be patient and wait on the Lord for him to give us that answer. You know, uh, a lot of times we get fearful because the answer hasn't come, but that doesn't mean the answer won't come. And we've got to be patient for it and wait for the Lord. George Mueller once said, difficulties are food for faith to feed on. Difficulties are food for faith to feed on. And so during that waiting period, we're not just waiting doing nothing. We're waiting obeying. We're waiting serving. We're waiting do, being obedient. Because uh, it does say the righteous cry. Those who are right with God. Those who are saved and their lives are right with God. They're crying out and the Lord is hearing them. And the Lord will answer them, but we've got to wait on the Lord. You see, those we're not exempt from the difficulties and from the afflictions, but we're going to be delivered in the midst of them. You know, we've got to wait. You know, we should never give up on waiting for the Lord. I shared this little tidbit with the men at the last men's retreat that a father was trying to teach his son this great principle of waiting and, and not giving up. On, on things and so he told his son you know who was wanting to give up wanting to not be patient for what the things that he needed to be patient for and he, he told his son he said look you know Thomas Edison you know he he didn't give up and Abraham Lincoln he didn't give up and then there was Ernest Baumgarten and his son said I never heard of Ernest Baumgarten he said I know because he gave up you see we there is blessings in waiting and waiting on the Lord to come through and not just giving up and just not being fearful and quitting, but waiting on God's answer because those cries are being heard and he will deliver them out of all 
their troubles. What a great blessing. What a great encouragement to hear that of the Lord. Let me read that one more time. The righteous cry and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Hang on to that promise, but keep on keeping on. In other words, keep on studying God's word. Keep on uh, reading all God's promises. Keep praying. Keep serving. Keep checking on people. Keep ministering how you can. Keep staying righteous in heart and soul and mind. Keep pursuing the Lord during all this time, and, and you'll see the blessings as we continue not giving up, but being faithful with what God has entrusted us to be faithful. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, as we've packed uh, these things, Lord God, in our lives with the promise that you've given us in your word here in Psalms 34. And Lord, we thank you for these promises, Lord, as we're reminded to keep our suitcase packed with these. As fear comes at us, we can live in that peaceful situation, Lord. Even in the midst of our afflictions, Lord, we have your peace and we, you have your promises. Lord, we pray for our church. Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray for our leaders, Lord God, that you would protect, heal, provide, give wisdom, direction, and guidance, Lord God. And we're looking, God, to you in all of our needs. Lord, we're dependent on you. And we trade in fear for peace, Lord, but God, because all you do for us. We love you. We thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I wanted to close on a few notes. Uh, just remember that uh, this coming Sunday is Easter Sunday. And be sure to view us online and uh, this Sunday. But we're going to be having the Lord's Supper. And uh, we have the elements available for you to pick up. And so if you want to... Uh, come to either campus. We'll have the elements uh, set out, and you can come in, come and pick just pick those up for your household and uh, be able to get those. And there'll also be the uh, offering box there if you would like to just in person drop off your tithes and offerings. You can do that as well. And so that will be available today. It will, is Wednesday, and so it'll we've been doing it this week and making that available. But it'll still be available tomorrow, Thursday from 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock for you to be able to drop off uh, your tithe and also pick up your uh, uh, Lord's Supper elements and be able to use those in your home as you hear the message on the Lord's Supper and your family be able to participate uh, with those elements as we celebrate the Lord, celebrate Easter, and celebrate with the Lord's Supper as well. God bless you. I'm praying for you. I'm looking forward to meeting you all together again. Um, you're in my prayers, you're in my thoughts. Let me know if there's any way that I can uh, minister or any of our pastors, uh, our leaders want to be able to reach out in any way we can to minister to you at this time. Continue to reach out to one another and uh, touch and check on and pray for and let's continue to reach out as we are the church. God's given us this great blessing as a church to love one another and to keep ministering to each other and uh, reach out to our world as well. So continue to being faithful. I love you. I'm praying for you. God bless you until we see each other again, either online or uh, in person. Uh, God bless you.